If you enjoy our content and think this is important material, the best compliment you can pay is by sharing this with your friends and family. <laughs> this helps us out a lot. Also, if you enjoyed today's program, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to this podcast. We would love to hear from you. Welcome to the Truth in My Days podcast, where we defend the Word of God against the challenges of men. Hello, this is Sonia. I'm here with Truth in My Days director John Torsh for a discussion about another important topic. John, I've had people coming to my house who claim to be Christians, but yet they deny the deity of Christ. And they're, they were from an organization called the Watchtower. Have you heard of these people? Yes, those are also better known as the Jehovah's Witnesses. And yes, they deny that Jesus is God incarnate, although the Bible is quite clear that he is indeed God. So someone who follows a Jesus who is not God is following a false Jesus in whom there is no salvation and are outside the pale of Christianity. This organization cannot be considered Christian. Yeah, I mean, the Bible does teach very clearly that Jesus is God. Uh, certainly. And not only does the Bible show that Jesus has the attributes and privileges of deity, forgiving sins and such, accepting worship, there are, in fact, clear and explicit statements in the Bible that show that Jesus is God. Where can we find some of these explicit statements? The best known one is at the beginning of the gospel, according to John, John 1, 1, which reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So you see here distinction between the Word, which is Jesus, pre-incarnate Jesus, who is with God, showing this plurality, and the Word was God, showing the unity. So we have here not fully fleshed out, of course, but the Trinity, that the, the Son is distinct from the Father, but the Son and the Father are both God, and there's only one God here. Some other ones. In John twenty twenty eight, you remember the Apostle Thomas was not with the other apostles when the risen Jesus appeared to them, and he said he's not going to believe unless he Percy gets to touch the wounds in Jesus, the, the holes in his hands, the, the big gaping hole in his side left there by the Roman spear. And Jesus appears to him eight days later and invites him to do that very thing, touch those wounds. And we read in John 20, 28, Thomas answered and said to him, my Lord and my God. But, but that's just a statement by Thomas. The Bible is accurately recording what Thomas said. How, how do we know I mean, is that still an explicit statement that Jesus is God? I would consider it an explicit statement because Jesus doesn't contradict it. You remember an account in Acts when Paul performs a miracle in one of, one of the Greek towns and the people come out and try to worship him as God. And he is falling over himself to, to convince them not to do that. Don't worship him. He's not God. We see a scene in the book of Revelation where the narrator once falls down before an angel to worship him, and the angel forbids him to do that. If Jesus were not God, when Thomas says this to him, then certainly we would expect a refutation from Jesus. Another one, Romans 9, 5. Christ came who is overall the eternally blessed God. Titus two thirteen, Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So who are we looking for? Jesus Christ. Who is he? Our great God and Savior. Hebrews 1.8. But to the Son, he says, and the he here is God in the context, but to the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. So here we see God saying to the Son, your throne, O God. This Father is calling the Son God. Well, these examples seem... Quite clear. I mean, how can the Watchtower even make an argument against them? Well, they have two ways of doing that. One of them is to mistranslate these passage, these passages. And the second thing is to focus on passages that they think show Jesus to be a created being. And if he's a created being, then he's not God. 
Specifically, they look at passages that refer to Jesus as being the firstborn. Okay, uh, that sounds interesting. Can we look at the translations? Sure. Let's start with John 1.1. 1, 1. As we saw, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay? Showing both the, the distinction and the unity in the God and the deity of Christ. Now, if you look at the New World Translation, and that's the one that was translated or, or created, produced by the Watchtower, Joe's Witness Organization, and you read John 1, 1 in their translation, you'll read this. In the beginning, the Word was, and the Word was with God, and the Word was a God. Oh, so there's that extra a, uh, which we don't have. Yes, and the question then, of course, is which is the correct translation, the Watchtower will insist that they have it right. Their attempted justification for this, if you look in the Greek, where God shows up first, the word was with God, there's a definite article attached to the word God, so it's the God. We don't do that in English, but we do do that in Greek, in New Testament Greek. Now, there's not, not a, a rigid adherence to it. Often you will not have the article where it's understood, but they will say that here, which says the word was with God, it has the God. And the second part, which says the word was God, it doesn't have the. So they will say it means that it has to be a God. And do you see any kind of problems with this right off the bat? Well, yes, if, if a person knows Greek, because in Greek, when you have two nouns that are joined by a form of the verb to be, like the word was a God, the way you would tell whether the sentence means the word was a god or god was the word, you, you cannot rely on word order. And instead, in Greek, one of those two nouns is going to have a definite article. That word will be the subject. And the other word, which is the predicate nominative, will not have the definite article. So even if... God, which we would translate as God with capital G, would normally or usually have the article in Greek. In this particular construction, it cannot, because that's necessary to show that God is the predicate nominative and not the subject here. Thanks for that technical explanation, scientist. what's called Caldwell's Rules. I try to, try to clarify it in English. The subject of a, of a sentence and the recipient of the action of the sentence are determined by position. Okay? The boy hit the ball. The boy is doing the hitting. The ball is being hit. And we do that by word order. If we say the ball hit the boy, then it's the ball who's doing the action. The boy is receiving it. In Greek, which is an inflected language, we don't do that. Word order won't tell us. It's the, the endings that we put on the end of the, the words. The endings, the so-called inflections, determine what's being done in the sentence. But where you have, as you pointed out, two nouns joined by a form of the verb to be, they both have the same endings. So when you see this in Greek, how do you know if it should be the word was God or God was the word? And as you explained, the way you do it is the subject is the one that takes the article and the, the predicate drops it off. So by taking it off God, you know, it's the word was God, not God was the word. Now, that may be a little bit technical. We can point out that in their kingdom interlinear, the watchtower gives you 14 parallels, which they claim we always translate it as a, a this, a that, a king, a prophet. But none of them is actually a parallel. None of them has two nouns in the same case joined by a form of the verb to be. So that's one problem. It's, it, it violates the rules of Greek grammar. And the second problem is that the article is in fact not necessary to put with God. It's understood. Uh, and you can see that. You'll, you'll take the Greek text and you can use the one published by the Watchtower. They call it the Kingdom Interlinear. And track down to John chapter 1, verse 6, where you read, a man sent from God. And that's how they will translate it. That's the God, big G God. There's no article in the Greek. 
You go on to verse 12. To them he gave the right to become children of God. Again, no article in the Greek. The very next verse, born nor of the will of man, but of God, same thing. Verse 18, no one has seen God at any time. In each of these cases, they translate it as God, the God, big G God, but none of them has the article. So obviously they are relying on context. I mean, their translation, the word was a God. It, grammatically, it, it could be an option, but with the rest of the context and what the rest of the Bible says, why would you pick that one? Exactly. But they will tell you when they come to your house that, oh, it has to be a God because there's no article. Which That's, is definitely not true. Which is definitely not true. And if you point that out to them, they, they become completely stumped. That one time when there was a Joe's Witnesses came to the door, I talked to him for quite a while. And then they said they come back and they come back with their expert. And they have, they have experts who supposedly know the Greek. And this fellow showed up. He had a stack of notes, you know, foot thick, it seemed. And we talked. I don't remember. It was three hours, four hours. It was a long, long time. And he finally got stumped on the Greek because he was arguing that when the Bible calls Jesus God, it uses a different Greek word. And I showed him it's exactly the same word. And he was stumped. He said, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I'm going to check. I'm going to get back to you. And he left. And I knew he was not going to come back. And he never did. Because he's, he's not going to be able to get around that. The Greek is very clear. Jesus is God. You can show that, in fact. And this is the third problem for them. You can show it in their own interlinear. The one I mentioned, the kingdom interlinear. If you open it to John chapter 1, and you'll, you'll see their translation. The word was a God. But if you look at their interlinear, they would say God, not a God. So how do they explain that away? Well, they don't really. That's, that's the thing. When you ask them these questions, they get stumped. Because the Jehovah's Witness who comes to your door does not know Greek. He's being told this is what to say. And then when you show it to them, they get stumped. And they either try to change the subject or they leave at that point. When they leave, they often promise they'll get back to it, the answer. And they don't because there is no answer. The fourth problem then, and, and this is a, a theological problem, if they tr want to translate as, as the word was with God and the word was a God, they don't have a problem. Well, if, if Jesus is a God, but he's not God the Father, if he's, if he's not the one true God, then do we have more than one God here? Well, we must. Thank you, everyone, for listening today. Unfortunately, we have run out of time, but please join us for the next part tomorrow. Same time and same place. Thank you for listening to the Truth In My Days podcast with John Torse. We would love to hear from you. Please feel free to share any questions or comments you may have. You can reach us on Facebook, Instagram, MeWe, and YouTube. Simply search Truth In My Days as one word. Again, Truth In My Days as one word, no spaces in between. And you can connect with us. You may also visit our website for more comprehensive material and to learn more about our ministry. Our website is truthinmydays.com. Thank you.